<laughs> I'm epic, bitch. Baka! Ooh, ooh. Hey! Baka! Tuesday! My name's Darcy, and the C stands for cool. <laughs> Manga Tuesday, episode 68. You are you 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 know what that means, fellas. That means next week or oh, next week. Oh yeah 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 yeah. But forget next week. It's not next week. It's this week. It's today. It's now fucking eleven thirty p.m. Tuesday night, and it's Monday Tuesday episode sixty eight. And I'm the I'm, I already told you who I am. I'm Darcy, and the C stands for cool. And today I'll be reviewing. Eve and Eve. I'm pretty sure I've seen it stylized as Eve X Eve before, but I mean, this is the official physical English release and it says Eve and Eve, so that's what we're going with. It's written by Nagashiro Rouge. Just kidding, Nagashiro Rogue. I just mispronounced her last name as an epic funny gag. It's Nagashiro Rogue. And Eve X Eve is a collection of short stories and not just any short stories of Yuri short stories and if you don't know what Yuri means it's Japan speak for lesbian now why do the Western manga community not just use the term lesbian since it's a already established English word that everybody knows and understands Instead, they choose to use Yui, which could be confusing if you're not a weirdo who knows what Yui means. Well, I don't know. Why do they also use terms like Shonen and Seinen and Shoujo and act like they're fucking genres that can be used to label and define different stuff? If I Google search Azamanga Dao, it'll tell me it's a Seinen manga. And if I look it up, fucking Junji Ito's Cat Diary, it'll tell me it's uh, a horrorcore rap album. So, well, you're a fucking idiot. Fuck you. But anyways, I am a Yuri connoisseur. I love a good Yuri. I've read many a Yuri's. You can look at my manga collection videos to see all my Yuri's. Top 10 Yuri's. Manga Tuesday coming someday. But anyway, this particular Yuri, which is a collection of Yuri short stories, I wasn't too fond of. A lot of the stories were pretty explicit in a way that I didn't personally really care for. Also, a lot of the stories are f pretty fucking weird. For example, the first story is set in some sort of post-apocalyptic world and these two girls that are together end up having sex and it shows it pretty explicitly. They just sort of rub crotches together and through some you know, post-apocalyptic alien sci-fi technology, they're able to, one of them gets pregnant from that sexual encounter, and then they have children together. And then, oh, and then I think the next story, there was like a sex bot, she was like a robot. So there's a lot of sort of off-the-wall, out-there themes and ideas which might appeal to you. You might be like, hey, I haven't seen this type of shit in other years, and you probably haven't. But maybe there's a reason you haven't, because maybe they're kind of shit stories. Like I said, another story's got like a sex bot, but I don't think she uses it for sex. She's just like some sort of robot AI maid, and it's like, yeah, just clean the house, but she won't actually have sex with it. She chickens out, because the vaginas are scary. I'll, I'll give it this. It certainly is very different. I've, you know, based off the cover alone, it looked pretty appealing. I mean, it's a very beautiful cover, and I thought I would like it, but alas, I was wrong. One of the last stories is somewhat interesting. I actually don't remember it that well, but just looking back over it, it's sort of coming back. They sort of, it's got something to do with them sort of uploading their brains, uploading their consciousness into a computer to be together forever. But I can't remember the specifics of the story. So but that sort of idea of uh, mortality and immortality and uh, connecting with a comp your consciousness with a computer fascinates me, so that's somewhat interesting of a idea to explore for a love story. Not just any love story, a Yuri love story. 
lesbians. A lot of the stories are very explicit in their nudity and their sexual interactions. Uh, I can't really show that um, this isn't a fucking water country video. But yeah, I don't really care for that. It almost detracts from it when I'm reading it to me. Contrary to popular belief, I don't read Yuri's to jerk off. I watch porn to jerk off like a normal person. It leads me to the one story that I actually do like. There's one there's one short story in here that I actually really do like. I think it's pretty good. It's simple. And if anything, it's probably, I guess, the least creative one. It's the most similar to a lot of the other Yui's I've read. And it takes place at a high school and it's just about a group of female friends having an argument about who they think's a top and who they think's a bottom. And things lead from there between two of them. But it's... Nothing's shown explicitly, it's pretty innocent and pure and pretty, you know, just uh, suggestive without, you know, saying, look, here's our bare vaginas pressed up against each other and then a panel from there, one of us will be magically pregnant because we've got alien technology where UE sex can result in babies. No, it's just one of them, like, does the, you know, that cliche where they, like, press their hand against the wall and now they're looking down on them and it's like, huh, we were right, you are a bottom. Because one of them got mad because they were all like, no, nah, you're totally a bottom. And then she got bottomed by the other one that they also said was a bottom. And then, uh, whatever, <laughs> who fucking cares? That's the one story in this uh, that I remember actually liking. The rest, meh. I think that's one of the advantage bats because there's a lot of... Yui manga that is set in a high school setting and some people will be like, oh, what the fuck, I want some adult romance stories. But I think one of the advantages of this, first of all, it sort of makes sense for the story, I guess, especially with a Yui with a lesbian story where it's like, you know, there's some sort of a coming of age moment where you, they might not even realise they're Yui until, you know, during the developmental stage in their life where that's when they're that's the, 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 that's the important moment of, of their life. That makes sense to have the story focused on. It's them coming to terms and realizations of their sexuality. But also, personally, I think one of the advantage of it is that it never really gets too explicit. It's like the most explicit it'll get is they'll fucking give them a pat on the head or a fucking kiss them on their fucking forehead. And it's like, whoa, that's a crazy big moment. You know, you don't just have them stripping completely nude, fucking each other's brains out. It's, it's you know, <laughs> I don't really want that for the most part in my Yuri. Believe it or not, I'm interested in the story. <laughs> yes, cra I'm a lunatic. I'm interested in the... The story, the plot development, the character developments, there. I'm interested in their rela actual relationship, not the sexual aspects of it. Their love as it blooms and grows. You know, yeah, that's why I read Yui. I'm a crazy person. I am sick in the head. I'm a sick guy like John Moxley. <laughs> so, Eve and Eve. Um, you know, a good name, by the way, for a collection of short Yui, short, Yui short story, lesbian stories, Eve and Eve, you know, it's like Adam and Eve, it's not, you know what they say, it's not Adam and Steve, it's Eve and Eve, huzzah, but yeah, I'm rambling and I'm stumbling, it's late, I didn't know what I was going to do for a manga Tuesday this week until like, a couple of minutes before I started recording, and it's late. Did I mention it's late? And did I mention that? Not a big fan of this. Honestly, wouldn't recommend it. Other than that one story, which once again isn't anything mind-blowing or revolutionary, I guess some of the other stories are a little more, I mean, not mind-blowing or revolutionary, but they're a little more out there, so maybe it's worth checking out. Maybe it interests you. I just realized something. It's l I said it's late, right? It's in the evening. And I'm reviewing Eve and Eve. Ling! 
<laughs> I'm fucking tired, man. I need sleep, but sleep is for the week. But I was reading some shit about some guy who was saying he slept eight hours a day, but he'd still wake up feeling tired all the time. And then he got finally got checked out properly, and they discovered that he was like stopping breathing for extended period of times. And if he hadn't got it found and corrected, he would have been at risk of like a brain aneurysm or a heart attack or something. And I think about, hey, I feel tired all the time too. And I think about that one time I was camping with my friends, and they could always hear me snoring because I snore loud. But one time they were saying, man, you're still a real fucking loud, but then just like stopped, went completely silent, then it would just start up again ages later. It was like you stopped breathing. I'm like, fuck, it's you, man. As if I'm not at risk of a heart attack enough for me. <laughs> anyway, I won't ramble about it any longer because I don't really have anything else to say about it. Um, for rating, uh, I'll give it a 4 out of 10. That's probably the best I can go. I don't remember it all that well because I didn't really like it that much. So it just didn't really stick with me. It sort of, you know, in one year, out the other. It was over maybe, I wasn't, it was only maybe six months or more ago I read it. But the, there is the one story that stuck with me, which is the one story I like. So I actually do like that. But the rest are all sort of pretty, my memory of them is pretty hazy and blurry. And that's because I didn't care for them that much, so. Four out of ten! Speaking of which, that's not speaking of which, there was nothing about what I'm about to say has nothing to do with anything that I've said prior. So, speaking of which, in a couple of weeks, it's going to be that time again. It's going to be time for the second annual Manga Tuesday Academy Awards! We're very nearing in on the two year anniversary of Manga Tuesday beginning, so it's time for another Manga Tuesday Academy Awards. Why am I mentioning it now? Because the voting is open right now! NOT! The voting will be open next Tuesday, but I'm working on what awards and what's going to be nominated and stuff at the moment. I got most of it figured out, but what I'm mentioning it now for is I want your help! Basically, I just want to know mainly for what what Manga Tuesdays you think, like what six or so Manga Tuesdays you think should be nominated for Manga Tuesday of the year, I want to hear. And what fucking four or five Manga Tuesdays you think should be nominated for worst Manga Tuesday of the year. That's the two award categories I'm... Looking for your feedback on what you think you should. One story I liked is called Top or Bottom? Question mark. The Showdown! Exclamation mark. A stupid game. The short one that everyone declares as a bottom tries to prove that she's a top against the other one that they, the rest of the friends also thought was a bottom. But then she gets topped by the bottom and she gets proven to be a bottom. But then they go off into the bathrooms. Uh-oh. And then they come back and they're like, we decided our zoo is the bottom. <laughs> She's all embarrassed looking in. That's the story. I said I wasn't going to talk about Even Eve anymore. We're done. And I said the episode was too long, but I, I'm just rambling anyway. I'm a fuckwit. I'm a crazy person. So join us in a couple of weeks for the Manga Tuesday Academy Awards. Spread the word. Um, and let me know any other, like, maybe new awards you think I should add this year. Or just whatever you think. I, who, people or things or episodes should be nominated for what they should just give me all your comments and suggestions but particularly within regards to best manga tuesday and worst manga tuesday what you think should be nominated even though best manga tuesday is probably a one horse race but we're just going to act like it isn't for the entire war show okay so <clears throat> i need to think of a good thing to say for thanks for watching so that pretty much sums things up and as always, whoops, I didn't know, you assuming I'm a human. Thanks for watching. And as always, skip to my loo, while I do what I do best. Do anything in the rest of the more, you used to it. Tuesday, Tuesday, is a Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, is a Tuesday. I see some people like, oh, why are all these fucking mongers?